That's some mind-bending interstellar travel from Stanley Kubrick's masterful 2001 A Space Odyssey. And while Space Madness is a common sci-fi trope, well you don't have to encounter a Type 3 alien civilization to go a little cuckoo. <laughs> The cosmos is teeming with singularities, wormholes, and inhospitable worlds, all strung out amid light years of void. In other words, you don't have to turn to science fiction to get your fill of space-related dangers. You don't even have to venture beyond the confines of the human mind. Enter the paranoid, delusional, and outright depressing world of space madness. While the subject continues to be a favored sci-fi romping ground, scientists and psychologists have also studied the topic a great deal. After all, manned exploration entails not only delivering healthy bodies, but also healthy minds. So here are five ways that space can make you crazy. Let's start with number five, space loneliness. Now science fiction is loaded with tales of humans that have to cope with this, many of whom wind up establishing adorable or creepy relationships with robots. So far, most manned space flights have been too brief and wrought with danger for loneliness to be an issue. Astronauts fill their mission time with repairs and experiments. They devote their free time to such hobbies as forcing down food, sleeping, and braving the indignities of orbital toilet use. Still, scientists continue to ponder the possibilities of manned deep space exploration and journeys to distant worlds. NASA has studied how work, entertainment, and food can all conquer the effects of solitude in space. Number four, gamma ray burst, or GRBs. Emitted by powerful supernova dubbed hypernova, you can think of these as energy shrapnel from titanic exploding stars. Sure, they're rare enough occurrences in the known universe, but the radiation killing zone for an exploding hyperstar is 6,000 light years across, compared to a normal star's 30 light year kill zone. Any crazy spaceship shenanigans would abruptly halt should the crew wander into such a doomed portion of the cosmos. But even smaller doses of GRB can have serious neurological consequences. A Cold Spring Harbor laboratory study on mice found that gamma radiation targeted a particular type of stem cell in the hippocampus, the area of the brain believed to be important for learning and mood control. Without proper radiation shielding, lengthy space exploration may be a recipe for cognitive and emotional breakdown. Number three, bad air. Clean air and clean water are obviously key to successful manned space exploration. If poor air results in a full-fledged air quality event, astronauts have much more than a stink on their hands. The result can prove deadly or merely maddening. A low oxygen environment can damage both the brain's globus pallidus, which controls subconscious voluntary movements, and the hippocampus. A four-year Brown University study gauged the possible effects of thin air on astronauts by studying climbers during an ascent of Mount Everest, an apt comparison giving the dangerous and extreme environment there. The climbers in the study exhibited decreased cognitive capacity and sentence comprehension during the ascent. To help prevent dangerous air quality events, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory developed the E-Nose Electronic Chemical Analyzer to detect potential problems long before humans could possibly sniff them out for themselves. The Brown University study also suggested using computerized conversation analysis tools. Think of it as a robot designed to listen to everything you say for signs of space madness. Number two, stress. Astronauts have stressful jobs. They have to worry about air quality, the debilitating effects of low gravity, gamma rays, mission parameters, navigation and equipment failures, all the while knowing that a thin wall separates them from an environment in which human life is anathema. NASA's National Space Biomedical Research Institute is working to develop various means to gauge crew stress aboard lengthy missions. The Institute has studied the use of computer interface tests in which astronauts perform basic motor functions on a joystick and answer questions to detect stress-induced fatigue. And finally, number one, crazy coworkers. Take a moment to think about your relationship with your coworkers. Even under the best of circumstances, it's not all birthday cupcakes and funny email forwards. Occasionally, you have to put up some mental blinders, take a breather, or even a stroll down to human resources. In space, however, none of these sanity savers is generally an option. Ideally, any crew member taking an extended space flight will have trained extensively with each other. Personality conflicts will have been overcome, and any psychological problems long dealt with. When fatigue, stress, poor oxygen, radiation, sensory deprivation, and loneliness set in, firmly ingrained professionalism should enable everyone to make it through the bumpy ride. Of course, when all that fails, we have mechanical dogs, robo-psychologists, and a world of pharmaceuticals to fall back on. According to a 2007 Associated Press report, astronauts actually keep a few tranquilizers on hand in case anyone goes suicidal or psychotic in space. In the words of Carl Sagan, the sky calls to us. 
If we do not destroy ourselves, we will one day venture to the stars. But will our minds survive the trip? So what about you? How do you think future space travelers will cope with these sort of dangers? And what's your favorite space madness sequence in a film? Let us know in the comments below and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.